Hey everybody, and welcome to Midtown Online. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our hope is that the music and the message from God's Word uh, will help you to find and experience God's best in your life. There's one thing we want to ask you to do. Sometime today, go to our website, midtownchurch.com, click that Connect tab, and fill out the online connection card. On that card, you can uh, let us know how to pray for you this week, how we can serve you. You can give us some information about yourself, and you can also request information about us. So thank you for taking the time to do that. Again, thank you for joining us for Midtown Online. We hope you enjoy worshiping with us. Good morning, Midtown. Thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas. Come on, let's stand up. Facebook, we're glad you're here too, wherever you are. Come on, put your hands together. Welcome to Midtown Church. If I haven't met you, my name is Doug. So, so glad that you chose to come and worship with us and celebrate uh, Jesus today. Uh, Listen, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, man, we're glad to have you guys with us. We're glad to have those of you that are here with us in the room. Especially, listen, if this is your very first time to Midtown Church, we want you to know something very, very important. Midtown Church exists 
to help people just like you find and experience God's best in their life. And everything we're going to do today as we celebrate Christmas is designed to help make that happen for all of us. And so if this is your first time with us, let me tell you what we're going to do today. In a moment, I'm going to sit down and we're going to do some more music. We want you to clap along, sing along, express your love to God through music. You will know the songs because they're Christmas songs, but just in case, the words are going to be on the screen for you as well. After the music, I'm going to be sharing a message with us from God's Word. And in this worship guide you received when you came in, you can follow along there, write some things down, and fill in some blanks. Again, all that's designed to help all of us move toward God's best in our lives today. So if this is your first time to Midtown Church, welcome. We want you just to sit back and relax and enjoy your time with us as we find and experience God's best celebrating the birth of Jesus today. I want to ask all of you, if you'd reach in your worship guide and find this connection card, if you're joining us on Facebook Live today, go ahead and go to our website, midtownchurch.com. Be sure to put the E on Midtown, okay? Click the Connect tab, and you will find our online connection card. We would love for you to fill that out. We want everybody to fill one of these things out today. In fact, if you're here with me in the room, we're going to walk through it together and give you a chance to fill it out. You ready? If you would, go ahead and put your name on that top line. Put your birthday on that next one. Be sure to put the year on your birthday for us, okay? That helps us very, very much as we get your information where it needs to be. Underneath there, click the boxes that pertain to you. Let us know how many times you've been here as a guest, if you're a regular attender, if we need to update your information, whatever it may be. We ask for your mobile carrier there because that helps us communicate with you via text message through our database. So thank you so much for doing that. The next part is your contact information. Please give us the email you check the phone number where you get your messages, the address where you get your snail mail. We really appreciate you doing that for us. We promise not to share your information without your permission, so don't worry about that. But thank you so much for sharing that information with us. The next part involves your phone. If those of you that are here, okay, if you get your phone out, make sure it's on Be Quiet. We would hate for it to go off during the service and be an embarrassment to you or be a distraction to the people around you. Those of you who are joining us online, this will be a lot easier for you. Go ahead and get on social media and let folks know that you're watching. Check in on Facebook, uh, post on Twitter and on Instagram. Listen, if you also would make sure that you tag Midtown Church in that, if you've not used our photo booth out in the market yet, we'd love for you to go do that. And if you're on Facebook today, smash that share button let folks know that you're worshiping with us and celebrating Jesus today. We really, really appreciate you guys doing that. And go ahead and post those pictures you take out there in our photo booth in the market. We appreciate that. Tag Midtown Church. There on the bottom of the front says, how did you hear about Midtown? Listen, if a person told you about Midtown Church, please put their name there, okay? Don't put family, friend, coworker. I mean, you can put that too. We, that's fine. But we love being able to make those connections with those names. So thanks for that. All right, flip the card over on the back. And let me show you just a couple more things. If you would like some information about Midtown Church or you would like to get plugged in serving in some way, if you will click, uh, check those boxes there, we will make sure somebody gets in touch with you to help you with that. Also, if you have a prayer request, you'd love for our prayer team to pray for you. And if uh, when God answers those prayers, you have any praises to share, please let us know because we love, love seeing those. We're going to finish up this card a little bit later on this morning, but let me tell you what you're going to do with it. Today, as you leave, in the back of the room, there are some chairs with baskets in them, and we'd love for you just to drop this card in one of those baskets, unless this is your first time here. Hey, first-time guests, we want to do something really cool for you to let you know we appreciate you being here, and here's what we'd like for you to do. Hang on to this card. Don't drop it in a basket as you leave. Instead, take it with you as you leave today back to the table where you picked up your worship guide. And if you will drop it off there, we have a gift for all of our first-time guests. Just a simple way to say, hey, thanks for coming. Thank you so much for being our guest. Consider it an early Christmas present. We would love to give you one of these. So first-time guests, stop by and pick one of these up on your way out, okay? Everybody with me so far? Yes? Hey, I'm almost done. Let me give you two more things. There's two envelopes in your worship guide. One of them has the big flap on it, says Midtown Church. This is what our members and regular attenders use to worship God by giving. And yes, giving is an act of worship. And I'm so proud to be a part of a church that is so faithful to worship by giving. Everything that goes in this envelope allows us to help more and more people find and experience God's best. If you're our guest today, we do not expect you to take part in the offering. 
unless it's something you just want to do. But again, our members and regular attenders are very faithful to worship by giving. So thank you for doing that. The other envelope that says Boone and Alcoa on it, we're asking you to give above your normal offering in this envelope. And everything that goes in here helps us pay for the land that we purchased over there at the roundabout at Boone and Alcoa and some architect fees and that kind of stuff as we're getting ready uh, to uh, be able to build that new building. And so thank you so much again for worshiping by giving. And I just want you to know I really, really appreciate that as your pastor. You can just drop these in the baskets as you go by. Speaking of giving and helping people find and experience God's best. Let me tell you about something really, really cool. In fact, I'd rather let somebody else tell you. This is Josh. Josh, come on out. Josh, our Connections pastor. Give Josh a big old hand. Hey. That is so nice of you to get them to clap for me. Well, you all know. All three services they've clapped, and all three services I felt real good about myself. Well, uh, you know, Josh, if nothing else. That's why we're here, right? I'm, well, no, <laughs> but I'm glad for that for you is what I'm saying. Well, you didn't good. clap for yourself this time. Well, I was so overwhelmed overwhelmed yes well i'm glad we got that out of the way yep. oh, but here's too. why josh is here we did something really cool for it's something different this year Let's and also do. very very cool uh for christmas so tell, tell them a little bit about that yeah so in our backpack ministry all through the school year we partner with about 14 schools to uh to feed several hundred students through the school year so this year we decided to partner with these schools to provide christmas gifts so we were uh grateful to partner with 10 schools in saline county uh, got to serve 81 students, and because of you guys, we, uh, we were able to give them 325 uh, Christmas gifts, and over 100 people volunteered to make That's that happen. That's amazing. So it was great. That is it was so good. cool, man. So thank you. I am so proud of our church for doing that. I, I tell you, it's, it's great to be a part yeah, cool. of such an incredibly generous church, yeah, right? And so yeah. we're going to try to get next year. Yeah, next year we're hoping to increase all of those. More schools, more students. So be looking for ways that you can help make that happen next year. So Excellent. thank you. Very good. Thank you, Josh. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys again for being uh, so generous. Here, here's That's the good. thing. 81 children are going to have a special Christmas this year because of what you guys did. And that, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? And I'm, I'm very, very proud to be a part of a church that is so generous and so willing to serve our community so that they can find and experience God's best, even if it means just buying a Christmas gift for a kid. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So here's what I'd like for us to do before we go any farther. I want us to take a moment to pray. And I want us to tell God thank you that we got to do that, that we got to serve our community. And I want us to ask God to bless those children and those families. And I want to ask God to, uh, to be pleased with our worship today as we celebrate his birthday. And I want to ask God to speak to our hearts today as we look at his word. Would you join me and let's pray about those things? Father, it, it is unbelievable the opportunities that you give us to serve our community for your glory. God, we don't want to call attention to Midtown Church. We want to call attention to what you're doing through your church. And God, I thank you that there are 81 children who are going to have just a little bit better Christmas this year. And we thank you that we had the opportunity to do that. We pray your blessings on those children and those families that they truly would know the real reason that we have Christmas. Thank you for all of those who volunteered, who gave, who were involved in so many ways to make that happen. And thank you that we get to be here today. God, thank you that we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus. And today as we sing songs, I pray that they would be pleasing to you. As we look to your word a moment, I pray that you would speak very clearly to our hearts, that God, we would truly leave here changed because we have been in your presence and because you speak to us through your spirit and through your word. So we give you this time. We ask you to, to use it in a powerful way for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, let's stand and continue to sing together.
join me in prayer? Father, thank you for that holy night. God, thank you for the night that Jesus was born, the first Christmas, and certainly it was different. God, as we approach this Christmas this week, Father, I thank you that you continue to minister your peace, your love, your joy through the midst of any storm we feel right now. God, even though we may have heard this story, open our hearts to hear your word fresh and anew today. God, change us as we leave here. And we pray this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. morning again, and thank you so much for joining us in person. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, Merry Christmas to you. You ready for Christmas? Yeah. Well, ready or not, here it comes, right? So we don't really have, don't really have much choice. We're really, really glad that you're here. I want to encourage you to open up your worship guide, click your pen open. If you're joining us online today, you know, you can go to our website and you can print out the notes, just like the, the exact same thing that we have here, so you can follow along there as well. So I hope that you will do that. We are wrapping up a series today called A Different Christmas. You know why? Because it's been a different year. Right on? Anybody? Nobody will argue with that. Everybody knows this year has been incredibly different, and we know that this Christmas is going to be different as well. It's been very different. That's why we got the upside down trees, and things have just kind of been turned upside down for a lot of people this year. Uh, some of you are experiencing your, your first Christmas without a, a loved one, and that's going to make things very, very different. It's, it's just a different time of year, a different time in our world and in our lives. And so what we've been talking about, though, is not only has 2020 been crazy different for all of us here, but the very first Christmas, the day that Jesus was born, it was very, very different for everybody involved there. Uh, for, for Joseph, for Mary, uh, for the, the shepherds, everybody, it was just a totally different kind of time. And so here's what we've been doing. And by the way, if you've missed any of these, you can always go back to our website, on our Facebook, or on our um, YouTube, and you can check them out there. But we said it was a very different kind of pregnancy, what with the whole virgin birth thing, right? Uh, very different. That's never happened before, and never happened since, never probably going to ever happen again. Although, I will say this, okay, I will say this, a um, study was done, I think it was in North Carolina, and one out of every 100 women who were pregnant in North Carolina said that they actually had an immaculate conception, miraculous conception. So that's our story, and we're sticking with it, okay? And there's some guy hiding somewhere. But anyway, here's the thing, okay? So there's, that's going on. It's, but we said that that different kind of conception is what really made all the difference for us. We have a real reason for hope, a real reason to celebrate. And then we said that it was kind of a, a different kind of crib, right? Because Jesus was laid in, in a manger, which is literally a feeding trough for animals. But we said that when Jesus is in the house, when Jesus makes his presence there in that place, everything was different. And when Jesus is present in your Christmas celebration, everything is different and made better. Last week, we said it was a very different kind of birth announcement, right? And, and birth announcements are a big deal now. A lot of folks like to, like to do all these really wild and crazy creative things. You may have had a great birth announcement, but I guarantee you this, you didn't have angels, right? Angels did not announce your birth, contrary to what your mommy says. I know that's, that's really sweet, but that's only happened once. It happened with Jesus. It's very, very different. And remember, all these things were different to make a difference, and today, as we wrap this series up, we're going to talk about what a different child Jesus was. It was a very different, different child. Now, this is really fascinating to me. I've, I've never, I think this is the coolest thing, craziest thing. It's hard for me to even comprehend, but it's amazing to me. Nancy and I, Nancy's my wife, we, we have three children, okay? Uh, a boy, a girl, and a boy. We have three children, same parents, all three of them. They are completely and totally different. Have you noticed that? Those of you that have more than one child, those of you that don't, just wait, okay? It's crazy to me that you can have same parents, same household, same, and these kids are so very different. I mean, we have a pretty sensitive kid. We've got a kid that's like, eh, whatever. Uh, we've got a kid that's very driven and will, you know, just go, go, go. And we've got a kid that's, eh, whatever. Maybe a theme here. I not thought about that until just now. 
We, we, this is where you'll notice. Watch this. This week when you're opening Christmas presents, watch how different your kids are. Right? Do you have one of these in your family? Very gently, very carefully removes the paper just a little piece at a time. Right? And you're going, come on already. Because at our house, we take turns, and I want to open my presents. I'm like, let's go. I got things open. And then you got the one that's like me, right? And just rips the presents up and throws the paper all over. And if you got stuff down in the bag and they're ripping the stuff out, it's everything, they don't, you got an empty bag because they threw it out, right? The kids are incredibly different, but I love that my children are different. My kids being different has made my life very different. I mean, if they were all the same, then life would be really, really boring. But because my children are different, my life is very different. And watch this. Because Jesus is very different, your life today can be different. Jesus was different so that he could make a difference in our lives. So that we and other people could find and experience God's best. Even in a crazy different time in our world. How was, how was Jesus different? Let's look at what the Bible says about that. If you have your Bible, I want you to open it with me to the Gospel of Matthew. Now, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament of your Bible. If you're not familiar with your Bible, the New Testament, about three-quarters of the way back, you'll find Matthew, then Mark, then Luke, then John. Before Matthew, you've got a couple of really great names, Zechariah and Malachi. Isn't, it's Malachi, actually. It's not Malachi. Uh, Matthew, is, uh, Matthew and Luke. Only two places we actually read about the, uh, the uh, birth of Jesus. And in Matthew, we're going to learn a little bit about what made Jesus so very different. Now watch this. Why is it important? We're going to see how Jesus was different. Because when we begin to understand how he was different, it will make a difference in this Christmas. It will make a difference in our lives. So let's read what the Bible says about the birth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 18. You ready? Here we go. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Now understand something about the culture, okay, in those days. To be engaged, you are essentially married. So much so that if you wanted to break the engagement, you actually had to get a divorce. So here's Joseph, rocking along, Mary, love of his life. We're going to do this thing. It's going to be great. Mary's like, oops, I'm pregnant. He's like, well, it wasn't me, so it must have been, you know, so I'm out. And he's going to just shut it down. But he was a good dude. He didn't want to make a big deal. He didn't want to embarrass her. So he's trying to figure out how to do it quietly. And in verse 20, here's what happens. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Now, verse 23 is a direct quote of Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah was an Old Testament prophet some 700 years before the birth of Jesus. This is what Isaiah said. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Verse 24 says, When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. See, Jesus was a very, very different child. He was different than any other child that's ever been born, but he was different so that he could make a difference. So here's what I want us to do. I want us to look at a couple of ways Jesus was different and how that difference can help us and other people really experience God's best this Christmas, but also for all of our life. Just a couple of things today. You ready? The first one is this. How is Jesus different so that he could make a difference? The first thing is this. I want you to write it down. He was fully human and fully God. This is one of the things that made Jesus very different. He was fully human, yet he was fully God. Now, this is probably the biggest difference about Jesus. Totally man, totally God. How in the world does that happen, right? Totally man, totally God. Well, he's totally man because he was born of a woman, Mary. She was completely human. Jesus was born just like the normal process that human birth takes place, 
but there was no earthly dad. There was no earthly father. He has a heavenly father, and the Holy Spirit is what caused that to happen. We read about it just a moment ago in Matthew one twenty. You see it there in your notes. We'll put it on the screen for you. As he considered this, as Joseph figured out how to discreetly you know, divorce Mary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus could be fully man and fully human because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Now, that's, that's hard to get your brain around, isn't it? That's a very difficult kind of concept. Those of you who are super scientific and into all the medical things and this and that, whatever, it, it just doesn't comprehend how does this work. Well, let me see if this will help you, okay? Here's something really important that might help you understand this difference. You have to remember, you have to understand, Jesus has always existed. He has always existed. He, he has been for, from forever and beyond. He has existed. You see, God, God, the concept God, the being God exists as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Son, Jesus, has always existed for all time, forever, and for, he always will. But at the right moment in history... God decided it was time to send Jesus to this planet, and in order to make sure that he was going to fulfill his mission, which we'll get to in a moment, he had to be born of a virgin. And so that's when the Holy Spirit is what made Mary pregnant, conceived of the virgin so that Jesus could be born. He's always existed, but now it's time for him to come to earth. The Bible explains it like this in John 1.14. Look at it there in your notes. So the word... The, the word word, you see the word word there in your notes or there on the screen, see how it's a capital W? It's talking about Jesus. So take your pen and right beside the word word, write Jesus. The word, talking about Jesus, you with me? The word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the fathers, here it is, one and only son. Jesus has always existed and the reason he can be fully human and fully God at the same time is because he always existed as God the Son. And now, through the virgin, he was conceived and became fully human. Now, here's the cool part about that. You ready? Because Jesus was fully human and because he was fully God, he was able to accomplish some amazing, miraculous things here on this planet so that you and I, so that all of us, could experience God's best. And, and there's no way we could list everything that he did, and I'm not even going to attempt to do that. But I just want to show you three things today. I want to show you three ways that him being different, being fully man and fully God, can impact our lives. Okay? You follow me? Because Jesus was fully human and fully God, I want you to write this down there in that next little spot. He revealed God to us. Write it down. Because Jesus was fully human and fully God, he revealed God to us. Jesus was able to show us everything we needed to know about God so that we can have a personal relationship with him. Jesus came to this planet totally different, totally man, totally God, so that he could reveal to us, show us who God really is and how we could have a relationship with him. John 1.18 says it like this. Look at it in your notes there. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, and notice that one is capitalized again. Who's it talking about? Jesus. Take your pen and write Jesus right there by the word one. No one's ever seen God, but the unique one, talking about Jesus, who is himself God, is near the Father's heart. And here it is. He has revealed God to us. Because God the Son, Jesus, has a unique, intimate, tight, close relationship with his Father, God the Father. He is uniquely qualified to show us what God is like. He knows God really, really well, and he's able to demonstrate that to us. Let's see if this makes sense to you, okay? Do you know guys who have a son, and their son is just like them? You know people like this? You know what I mean? Yeah, some of you are looking and going, yes, this guy right here. You're pointing at people. Right. You, you know people who are like this? 
And they, they act like them, they talk like them, they walk like them. They've gotten these, these characteristics, these manners, and they're just like them. I love that, by the way. I love it. Now that I have grown children, I absolutely love this. And here's why. You remember, as a teenager, you teenagers out there, you remember, I, I'm never going to act like them, right? I'm never going to say that. I'm never going to treat my kids that way. I'm never going to do those things, right? And now that I have grown kids, they do. <laughs> it's awesome. They'll say things I say. They'll act the way I act. They'll tell the, tell the same stupid dad jokes that I tell. Yes, you know, mission accomplished. And they're just like me. And I love that, okay, in, in the good ways. Jesus is just like his dad. He's just like him. And while we've never actually seen God the Father, we do know what Jesus is like. So if you want to know God, get to know Jesus. If you really want to know God, get to know Jesus. In fact, there was this one time where Jesus was hanging out with his disciples. The disciples were these 12 guys that Jesus chose to, to kind of mentor and pour his life into while he was on this planet. And one of them was named Philip. And Philip one time said, Jesus, can you show us God the Father? And I, I want you to listen to what he said. It's not in your notes. We're going to put this verse on the screen, though. Jesus replied to Philip, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? You want to know God? Get to know Jesus. Because Jesus, because he was fully human and fully God, has revealed to us everything we need to know about God so that we can have a relationship with him and experience him right here, right now. Here's another thing, though. Because Jesus was fully human and was also fully God, I want you to write this down. He gave us an example to follow. Write that in the next blank. He gave us an example to follow. This is another one of the main reasons that Jesus came to earth. He wanted to teach us how to live life. He wanted to teach us how we and other people could really experience his best. So Jesus lived those 33 years on this planet showing us men how to be men, showing us how to do marriage, showing us how to be parents, showing us how to be a kid, showing us how to have the right kind of dating relationships, showing us how to handle, watch this, difficult people. Jesus faced all kind of difficult people. They were mostly church people. Blah, right? Jesus showed us how to do all that. And he says, I, I'm here and I'm different, fully human, fully God, so that I can show you, give you an example of how you should live on this planet. In fact, he said it straight out in John 13, 15. Look what it says there. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I've given you an example to follow. Do as I've done to you. Here's what I know. Good teachers give good examples. Good teachers give good examples. And Jesus says, I want to teach you how to do life. I want to teach you how to, how to deal with everything that this world's going to throw at you because the Bible also teaches us that Jesus dealt with everything we will ever deal with. And he never sinned. He did it right. And if we will follow that example, then we also can do it right and experience his best. He was fully human, so he knows all this stuff. But he was fully God, so he did it the right way and gave us an example to follow. Here's the last thing. Because Jesus was fully human and fully God, he sent the Holy Spirit. Write that down there. He sent the Holy Spirit. Now let me explain what that means. Jesus was born of the Spirit, so he was uniquely qualified to send us the Spirit. Now what is the Holy Spirit? Now that's the third part of God. Remember I said God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides inside every one of us who has accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. If you've truly put your faith in Jesus, now listen, not just believe about it in your head, but you've accepted him into your heart. Believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sin, he rose again, you put your faith in him. We don't actually accept physically Jesus doesn't climb into our lives. That'd be weird, wouldn't it? He sends the Holy Spirit to reside in us. And he is different enough, fully human fully God, to be able to be uniquely qualified to send the Holy Spirit for us. In fact, this is what he said about it in John 16, 7. Jesus says, in fact, it's best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. Right there beside the word advocate, right, Holy Spirit. That's who he's talking about. I'm going to send this advocate, someone who's going to advocate 
for me, someone who, who's going to be there on my behalf. I'm going to send the advocate. If I do go away, I will send him to you. So when you accept Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit resides in you, and the Holy Spirit does lots of things. One of the things the Holy Spirit does for us is he convicts us of our sin. When you mess up, when you do something God doesn't want you to do, the Holy Spirit helps you to know that that's wrong. In this very challenging and difficult year that we're going through, in this very challenging and difficult season that we're going through, the Holy Spirit gives us direction. As we listen to God's word, he speaks to us. As we go through a very difficult year, again, some of us are facing holidays for the first time without a loved one. The Holy Spirit brings us comfort, gives us peace. Jesus is uniquely qualified to send us the Holy Spirit because he was born of the Spirit. And in every way, watch this, fully human, fully God, which makes him completely different. But he's different so that he can make a difference in our lives. You can count on him. You can trust him. He can relate to what you're going through so that he can help you experience his best. And that difference, the fact that he's fully human and fully God, that difference makes all the difference now. I want you to write that down. That difference makes all the difference now. The fact that he's fully human and fully God, that difference makes the difference in our lives right now, which means that we can, he's there for us right here, right now, in everything we're going through. He is available to you in your struggle, in your stress, in the problems and the pressures of life. Remember, let's go back and look, and look at one thing. You ready? This is not in your notes, but we read it just a moment ago. Quoting Isaiah 7, 14, Matthew 1, 23 says, Look, the virgin will conceive a child and she will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means what? God is with us. Listen to me. He's with us right now. So that he can make a difference in your life. So that this Christmas will be so different for all the right reasons. Jesus is very different. He was different in that he was fully God, but he was also fully man, so he can make a difference in your life right now and everything you go through. But there's one other difference I want to call your attention to. You ready? And that's this. Jesus was also different because he was born to die. Write that down. Jesus was born to die. This was really the main purpose that Jesus came to this world, was so that he could die. He was born so that he could die. Now, what does that mean? Listen very carefully, okay? Jesus was born so that he could die on the cross to pay for the sins of the world. That's, that's just the way it works. The Bible says all of us are sinners, and the way God set it up from the beginning is the only way to get rid of sin, which, by the way, separates us from God, right? The only way, we can't have a relationship with God, and we can't have eternal life in heaven because we are all sinners, and the only way to get rid of sin, the, the price, the payment for sin is, is death. Somebody has to die. And Jesus was born for that purpose, to die for us. In, in fact, this is, this is pretty crazy. His very name means he will die for the sins of the world. That's what Jesus means. We read about it just a moment ago. It's in your notes. Look what it says, Matthew 1.21. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And he did that when he died on the cross. Jesus means he will save his people from their sins, and he did that by dying on the cross. The angel told Mary the same thing. Look at Luke one thirty one. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. And Jesus means what? He will die for the sins of the world. Jesus was fully aware of this. He spoke about it himself in John 3, 16 and 17. This is Jesus speaking. Look at your notes. For God loved the world so much that he gave the very first Christmas gift. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now here it comes. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world but to save the world through him. Jesus was born so that he could show us God's mercy and grace. And he did did that when he died on the cross in your place. That's why he was born. From the very beginning of time, Jesus existed and he came to this planet and was born of a virgin 
so that he could die on the cross to pay for our sins. Now, before you start overthinking this, and before you start thinking, well, what kind of heavenly father is that? How good is God if he sent his one and only son to die on the cross? I mean, that sounds kind of mean. That sounds kind of, that's a horrible. Why, why, would God, why would God do that? Why would God force Jesus to do that? You need to know something really important. You ready? Watch this. Jesus was fully aware of the plan from the very beginning. God didn't make him do anything. He chose to. In fact, he was named Jesus. You ready for this? His name was Jesus before he was ever even conceived in Mary's womb. How crazy is that? Jesus, he will die for the sins of the people before he was ever conceived. The Bible says it in Luke 2, 21. Look at your notes right there. Eight days later, eight days after what? After Jesus was born. The baby went to be circumcised. Jewish law, when your kids, when the boys are eight days old, they go to the temple, you present them to God, they're circumcised. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus. Are you ready for this? He was named Jesus, which is the name that was, watch this, given to him, you ready, by the angel, here it is, even before he was conceived. You know what that means? Jesus was in on this plan from the get. He knew what was going on. He knew that he was going to be born so that he could die. And he chose to go along with the plan. Yes, the night before he was betrayed, when he was betrayed, before he was crucified, as he's praying, he said, God, if there's any other way, Father, if there's any other way to do this, if there's any other way to save the world from sin, could we do that? But if not, let's go. I'm willing to die for the sins of the world. That's what makes Jesus different. And watch this. That difference can make a difference for eternity. Write it down. That difference, the fact that he was born to die, makes a difference for eternity. This difference makes all the difference for eternity. And here's what that means for you and me. Jesus can make a difference for your eternity when you are willing to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Listen, guys, here's what we know. (laughs) This year has been different, correct? This Christmas will be different, but that's okay. Because Jesus is different. So let's wrap things up today by asking the big question we ask every week. And what's our big question? Come on. Hey, if you're new today, we like to ask this question. Well, so what? That's the Christmas story. I've heard it a hundred times. Yeah, whatever. Well, so what? What, how, what do I do with that? Good question. Thank you for asking. It's a fantastic question. Let me see if I can help you understand the so what today. The fact of the matter is this. The birth of Jesus was completely different for everybody involved. Poor Joseph. He's engaged to the love of his life. She comes up pregnant. He's like, well, stink, right? Now what do I do? He's just going to shut the whole thing down. Poor old Mary. She's engaged, going to be married, live happily ever after, and then boom, she turns up pregnant by the Holy Spirit. What am I going to do? You know, Joseph's just trying to figure things out. We were reading about it. Joseph is is trying to figure out what he's going to do. This is all so different than the way he wanted it to be. And then, you ready? Watch this. And then God intervened. God showed up and gave him an opportunity to make a difference, for everything to be different. So we always give you a memory verse. We always give you a memory verse to use, and and here's what I want you to see about this. God wants to intervene in your life and make a difference now and for eternity. But just like Joseph, you have a decision to make. Here was Joseph's decision. Matthew 1, 24 is our memory verse for this week. When Joseph woke up from the dream, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. He did as the angel commanded commanded he did as the angel commanded 
He accepted the difference that God could make in his life. The question this morning is this. Will you? Will you accept the, G- the difference that Jesus can make in your life? Both now and whatever you're dealing with right now and for all eternity? Because only he, only he can do that. I want you to write this down. You ready? Accepting Jesus as different makes all the difference. Accepting Jesus as different makes all the difference. When you accept that he is different, fully human, fully God, he can make a difference in your life right now, whatever you're going through. When you realize he was different, born so that he could die, he can make a difference for all eternity. Listen, this Christmas is going to be different. Listen, be careful. Don't tune out yet. Watch. This Christmas is going to be different. The question is this. You can decide today to accept Jesus and make it different for all the right reasons, or you can be without Jesus and it'll be different for all the wrong reasons. Now listen, we're going to finish things up with this series in a different kind of way. Why not, right? It's been a different year. Let's wrap it up very different. I want you to grab your connection card and look at something with me, okay? On the back, on the bottom of your connection card. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the online connection card. There's a thing called My Personal So What. This is a way for you to communicate to me and our pastors. We don't share this with everybody, okay? Just our pastoral staff sees this. Are you going to accept Jesus this week? so that Christmas is different for all the right reasons. And I'm giving you some options. Let's look at them together. The first one says, Today, for the first time, I accept Jesus as my Savior. If you've never truly put your faith in Jesus, if you've never truly said, Hey, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on the cross for my sin. I know you were born to die for my sin. And I accept what you did when you died for me. I receive you for the first time. I put my faith in you, and I make you the boss, the Lord of my life. Then check that box right there. And let us know that you made that decision. We want to follow up with you and help you know how you, can, you know that you have eternal life. And what are some next steps in experiencing God's best here on this planet? A lot of us, we've already done that. The second one might be for you. It says, today, I accept the difference Jesus can make in my blank by blank. Maybe you need Jesus to make a difference in your marriage, in your family, with your children, in your dating life, in your job, in your, whatever it may be. You need something that's right now, you need Jesus to make this difference. And so you write that down, what that is, and I'm going to trust him. I'm going to put my faith in him. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to rely on him, whatever it may be. Or maybe God spoke to you in a totally different way today, and that's cool. We've given you a blank right there so you can write something down. But I just want to challenge you to do that. Challenge you to write something down that you're going to do to make this Christmas different so that it makes a difference for all the right reasons. If you want to memorize Matthew 124, you can check that box with me as well. But we want to finish things up today, like I said, in a very different way. And here's what we're going to do. Carol is going to come and sing a song. And as he does that, and we light our candles, I want to challenge you to think through the difference that Jesus can make in your life and how you're going to accept him as different so that he makes a difference this Christmas. Take me back to eight years old, little church on the dead end road, with a candle flicker in one hand, dead sand in the other. Take me back to silent night, my heart was full and the world was right, because right now the world looks nothing like those innocent December. These days, peace on earth is hard to find. And I need you to remind me one more time. There is still the hope of Christmas. You're still the light when the world looks dark. You're still the hope of Christmas. Still the hope of my heart. Watch the snowflakes falling down like a blanket on this town. 
For a moment we can hardly see the pain this year has brought us. May the sick find healing's touch. May hatred spite be one with love. And may every heart make room for you, the one who came to save us. You are the hope of Christmas. You're still the light when the world is dark. You're still the hope of Christmas. You're still the hope of my Held my head to pray tonight. Held my little girl by my side. She slipped her tiny hand in mine. And we both talked to you. Took me back to eight years old. My daddy's hand and a story told about heaven's love in a manger low and a promise that's still true. Cause you're still the who. You're still the light when the world looks dark. You're still the hope of Christmas. You're still the hope of my heart. And you're still the hope of Christmas. You're still the light. When the world looks dark, you're still the hope of Christmas. You're still the hope of mine. We join you in prayer. God, as we see this candle glow, God, may we not forget that there is hope, that there is light in the darkness, and that your presence is everywhere. God, help us to forget this year, forget what's happened, and look forward to what you have in store for us, the fresh and new. God, we thank you for this time today in your presence, and we thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in his holy name we pray. Amen.